uh, one of the uh, sets reminded me of another vampire movie. Oh yeah, uh, Which one? Inside uh, Mary and Chris's house, where it's pretty much like all white almost, mm -hmm. reminds me of this, uh, I think it's either Korean or a <laughs> Japanese vampire movie called Thirst. Okay. And um, it's these these uh, two people that also love each other, they're both vampires, and they kind of try to contain themselves also. And all of, they take this building on the inside and all of it is just pure white like yeah. is that like um something that has to do with vampire lore or is it just something like to simulate like light because it can't be in in the sunlight you know like to make it brighter than normal since they have to be in the dark all the time or with with that um with that i don't know if it's with vampire lore the reason why we chose that house was because it's very like sterile environment very white and clean and sterile and we thought you know her life was since Wayne, she was separated from Wayne. She was trying to get happiness somewhere, you know, trying to get in a bad marriage, you know what I mean, that shouldn't have worked. She just did it to try to, like, somehow find happiness. So we wanted that to kind of represent, like, her life without Wayne. Mm -hmm. And it's actually kind of a cool story. That house, actually, if any of you are NBA fans, uh, Andre Karolinko, who plays for the he played for the Utah Jazz, now he plays for the, um, the Minnesota... Timberwolves. Mm -hmm. He's like from Moscow. He that was that's his house. Oh wow! And he let us shoot in his house, <laughs> which is amazing. That's pretty his cool. wife is actually the Russian girl that um the the vampire specialist that kind of oh, yeah. has all the drawings of the vampires. That's so, awesome. Kind of a cool cool tie in on how we got the location. That is pretty cool. So nice. yeah. Any other thoughts, questions? If not, no big deal. We can you know we could talk after and but thank you guys so much especially to some of you that kind of came off the street to <laughs> check it out really appreciate it so if you if you like the movie it's on itunes it's on amazon it's on google play uh just came out on dvd but you know definitely put on your facebook find the trailer send it out say hey i just saw this you know we we're, we're the type of movie that um you know we didn't have a big budget we had a very tiny budget and we didn't don't have the studio backing, so it, anything helps to kind of get the word out and tell people to go see the movie and support, you know, independent uh, filmmakers that are trying to make it happen. It was funny, and I I would like to apologize because I uh, we were walking up to the theater, and then I think you're trying to like convince us, but I didn't know I didn't know you were part of this, and we we're like I said no because we were coming to see this, so oh, I didn't oh, I didn't mean to say no to you. No, I fine. I already had plans to come see this. I'm, I'm so. a shameless promoter of my stuff. And I, I, I realized hopefully one day I won't have to do that. Do you have a question card? Yeah. Is the is the music That's from funny. one person or is it? A we had um there's a band called the format um if any of you guys know the band fun they're huge right now before before they were fun they were called the format and um sam means is is one of the composers that we had and sam means that and and uh nate from the format um nate roos they they broke up and he became fun and sam kind of is doing his own thing so um we got lucky enough to have Sam write a bunch of original songs, um, like the one where there, there's one where um, the time where I see Chris driving away in the car and it's like she's humping my breezy, you know, <laughs> and then it comes again when I'm in the snow and, and I climb the fence and fall. Mm -hmm. it's that that he wrote that song. It's I love that song and <laughs> and um, so he he put a bunch of original songs in there and then also we have a guy named Robert Allen Elliott and he he's a great composer. And he did kind of all the score, like when we're fighting the vampires and and whatnot. So, and then we, we sourced a lot of songs. Um, we got we we I was really sad. We had a Wham song in there. We had Last Christmas, you know, right after he bites her and like sucks her blood, and she thinks she's dead, and and then mm -hmm. takes her back to the house. Like right there, we had Last Christmas playing, and it was just like such a great moment. But uh, we, this, if you listen to it again, the song is like oddly reminiscent because we had to have our songwriter like make a fake version of it because <laughs> we couldn't pay to have wham it's just you know it, you don't realize how many how much money it is to get all this music yeah. and to really kind of you know it's 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 a hard battle but uh you know well, i was very happy with the music that we did get and um you know i i, I enjoy the soundtrack and and uh, i enjoy the song so i'm glad we got lucky on a few so Will the soundtracks be available on iTunes? Um, uh, I don't know. I gotta figure. We gotta at some point probably. It was a really um, good soundtrack. Yeah, thank you. 
Thank you. Matt is hilarious. Matt Matson, yes. yes. How much of that was scripted and how much was just him improv? You know, the it's all scripted, but on the day of the shoot, like, I trust my, most of those actors, like Adam, who plays Wayne Gretzky, the vamp, main vampire, Matt, um, both, all this, both the security, I mean, the um, soror, I mean, fraternity guys, they're all guys from my improv group. And so, and Matt Jesperson, the co-writer, we, we wrote it together. So, but on the day of, like, when we'd have the sides for the day, if they had an idea, like, let's maybe, what about if I say the line this way, we'd kind of tweak it beforehand. And then we do it. We're shooting on video, so you can take a lot of takes. And afterwards, we'd say, "Okay, let's just do one for fun." Mm -hmm. But I'd say ninety percent of the movie is scripted. But each guy brings like something so special to to the to the performance. And it's one thing. It's like if you've ever written for actors that you know, it's really nice because you know them and you know how they're going to say things. Mm -hmm. And so certain things you can make them sound improv or or off the cuff because you can you kind of know how they're going to say it. So that's it's really a fun experience to write for people that you that you know. So. So when you guys were editing, did you edit together? Matt, yeah, yeah, Jesperson and I, yes. Um, Was there some lines that maybe you liked better than he, and it was kind of hard to decide which jokes are funnier? Yeah, there was, there was. Um, we like we'd fight over things, and even when we were writing it, we fight. We made a rule that basically both of us had to love the joke. Or else it didn't make it in the script. We both had to agree on it. So I think that makes for a good, good comp. You know what I mean? Because if one, only one person likes it, the other person doesn't. You know, then you know it, it's just kind of. I, I, we felt it was a good rule of thumb. And you know, some of the stuff we think is hilarious and nobody laughs at. And that's kind of the fun of making a comedy, though. You just kind of do what you want, and you hope you hope people like it, and you hope you hope it hits. So. Anyway, we have somewhat of a strange sense of humor, and, but anyway, hopefully, uh, hopefully it catches on. So, oh. um, how did the idea come together to put like vampires and the college scene together? Because I guess you know vampires are kind of a, a common thing nowadays ever since other vampire movies uh, came about but this seemed like a perfect blend for like a comedy romance kind of scenario you know the original idea came I you know I saw that the Twilight thing was coming out and it's like and then True Blood I started watching that and I was just like kind of annoyed because every one of these series like all of the vampires are the sexiest people in the world they're like the gorgeously, they're ripped, they, you know, they're apex predators, they're like the top of their game. Mm -hmm. I'm like, do these guys ever have a bad day? <laughs> and so I was like, what about a loser vampire? What about, about a guy who just is off his game and can't do it? You know, what, you know, a guy who can't even grow his teeth, you know, mm -hmm. that the story of impotence. And that, that made me think of like, let's, that's kind of what it built around. And then I thought, what would he be doing? Well, he's been around for years and years and years. What better than to teach history? Yeah. So set it on a campus, and, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, one of the main reasons we actually chose to have the girl be alive, her mom, you know, the mother and daughter mm -hmm. being played by the same actors, because when you're indie film, you like you want to entice an actor to play, you know, a bigger name, so you can somehow get some more traction and get people to see it. So we thought, you know, maybe a a young actress would want to see this role and be like, you know, that's fun. I, you know, when do you get to play two roles in the same movie? Yeah, we were a little worried about it too because it's coming across cheesy. But in the end, I have people that say, "How did you get two actors that look so similar?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, same person. Yeah. <laughs> so it worked. It worked. Anyway. It fooled me. So yeah, and, uh, the one I think it's important. Yeah, like most people say, I didn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. So that's good because then, then you're not constantly like being distracted, like. I wonder where the real girl is, or what, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. When you're writing comedy, do you, do you think of like jokes that you've had for years that you finally are able to tell in the movie, or did they just kind of, did they come out when you were writing the script? You know, I mean, there's certain lines that I'll write down, I'll just put in my phone if I think of something funny, yeah. and I'll try to work them in somewhere, you know, into a script, but like for the most part, I. They kind of come as as the scene unfolds, but yeah, there, there's a few lines that you're like, you hear a friend say, or you you say, or you just like, man, that needs 
that line needs to be in a movie and you try to like to work it in. Um, I'm trying to think of one. But bees? I mean, oh, bees. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate bees. No, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't plan on that one. It just, Adam actually, I think he's so great. He's such a great improviser. And, and um, <laughs> I don't know why. It's such a weird line, but I love it. Sorry, I'm, but I, I just love his delivery. I think, I think he added, we, I just hate bees. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we just wanted to have the most outrageous excuse ever. Oh yeah, there are a bunch of bees said that second line and just, we couldn't. We couldn't leave it out. So, but yeah, I, I can't really think of one that I've really wanted in there. there. No, actually, one. We have a friend that has this story about this getting getting hit on. At a um, this guy hit on him. <laughs> he was basically this guy asked him, "You want a date?" And he's like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "He's like, no, I'm okay. It's fine." He's like, "No, you want a girl?" And, I, and he's like, no, I'm, I'm cool. And he goes, oh, good, because they got diseases anyway. <laughs> and um, he's like, oh, thanks for offering me like a prostitute. And then they have diseases. Thank you. And, he, and then he's like, and then like, I guess later on in the night he saw him and he said goodbye to this weird guy. And he kind of went, he didn't know why he did that. And the guy looks at him and he goes, okay, crazy ass. And like, walked away. <laughs> so that line, okay, crazy ass, is like, Something me and my friends always say to each other. And so we had to, we weasel it in when Alexis says, you know, when they're going to make out and it comes out, he says, I like to watch. You know, when we make out on my bed, he's like, can I watch? It's what, you know, it's what we do. You that's know, hilarious. I like to watch. She goes, okay, crazy ass. So that's kind of like, that's, that's definitely funny. one where we, we like, and that I don't usually do line readings to actors, you know, because they hate that when you're like, say it like this and you actually say it. But I had to line read that for her because for me, like, she had to get the right like intonation on. Okay, crazy ass. So, anyway. That was awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for coming and um, you're a nice intimate group, you know. But uh, and yeah, like I said, tell your friends, put it on Facebook and stuff, um, tweet about it, whatever if you liked it, and and thanks again for. For coming out, I appreciate it. Are you gonna make another movie? Yes, actually, we have one that we already shot that I, that I co-wrote and directed as well, and it's basically the same cast you just saw um, with some LA actors, like some bigger you names. For guests to have the same. Basically, that's kind of the, that's kind of the goal. You know what I mean? Like you work with. I've been working with these guys for over ten years doing improv with them, and I I love performing with them. And we have a great rapport, and so. The next one we have is, it's basically a mix between Willow and Princess Bride. Oh my god. So it's, mm. it's set in like a fantasy, <laughs> fantasy world with dragons and elves and, and orcs and uh, it's shot all green screen. So we shot it like 300 style. So it's going to be really like kind of stylized and a ton of VFX. And actually Adam, who plays the vampire Wayne, he, he plays my brother, we're estranged brothers. And I want to marry this elf girl, mm -hmm. but um, my dad won't allow it because elves and humans can't mix. <laughs> and uh, the only way I can do it is if the, the bloodline gets passed to my brother. But he's a bounty hunter. He's a slob. He doesn't want to get married. <laughs> so I got to convince him to get married. And uh, he doesn't want to do it. But in the meantime, this princess in distress sends out a, a signal. And, nice. and we... Basically, we have to go on a quest to save the save the princess, and hopefully, he'll fall in love. So I could, you know, so it's this kind of epic journey about two estranged brothers that are uh, going on a quest. So, and James Marshall, if any of you guys watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, he plays Spike. He's the blonde-haired vampire guy in Buffy, and he's he's a really great villain in the movie, and um, so yeah, so that that'll be done in like. End of July, we're hoping to maybe have a screening near at Comic Con, kind of a special screening then, and then hopefully it'll be out in the fall. Nice. So yeah, um, we'll look for it. All right, cool. Well, thank you. Thank you guys. Really, thanks again for coming. Appreciate it. I know it was a long.
long haul out here. It's like <laughs> kept driving <Yeah>. and driving. <laughs> we kind of got lost on the way, but we're glad we made it. Yeah. So. Good. Good. We thought we were coming to visit cannibals or something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. we were like, this is the middle of nowhere. Is there really <laughs> a theater funny. out here? <laughs> so how'd you guys hear about it? Um, I did. I online. Oh, cool. Awesome. She actually loves awesome. to review uh, horror movies. I do movies. YouTube reviews. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Hopefully you'll give us a good one. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming, Maddie. Yeah, it was awesome.